This video was made possible by the support of Wondrium, the platform where you find everything you ever wondered about. Go to wondrium.com slash terramata to find over 6,000 hours of video courses, documentaries, and series. This is the longest fence in the world, running across Australia. Being born on the wrong side of it is a death sentence for this animal, the dingo. Farmers want to kill it, and conservationists want to save it. And now, the fence built to keep dingoes out may provide the proof that Australia's ecosystem is better off with the dingoes in. It's called the dingo or dog fence. You can see it on satellite images, an enormous wire barrier that stretches more than 5,600 kilometers across Australia's vast landscape, passing through South Australia, along a section of the New South Wales border and into Queensland. It divides most of Australia's arid lands from the fertile grazing area, which makes up only about one-third of the continent's land mass. And it determines whether dingoes will live or die. On one side of the fence, dingoes are a protected native species, free to roam at will. On the other side, they're considered pests to be persecuted and poisoned. To understand why, we have to go back in time. The dog fence was first erected in 1885. It took five years to build. Originally, it was intended to stop the rabbit plague from spreading across state borders. At that time, millions of rabbits were breeding and eating their way around the country. But the fence proved to be a wasted effort and soon became dilapidated. It stayed that way until the early 1900s when more and more sheep farms were being established. The fence was fixed and gained a new purpose, to protect flocks of sheep by keeping out hungry dingoes. The maintenance of the fence has become a costly undertaking. Millions of dollars are invested every year to keep it in working order. There are even plans to extend it in some areas. It might sound crazy, but it's a worthwhile sacrifice because the sheep and cattle industries are valued at billions of dollars. The annual cost of maintaining the fence is around 8 million US dollars, but this is vastly outweighed by the 3 billion dollars brought in by lamb exports and 8 billion dollars earned from beef exports every year. The fence has helped reduce losses of sheep to predators, but livestock continues to be killed. Dingoes still live and breed in the fertile country, and young ones will sometimes crawl through holes in the fence. This is a map of Australia's livestock and dingo distribution. Here are the sheep, primarily in the fertile grazing areas. And there you have the cattle, mainly in the arid zones. The white striped sections show where most of the dingoes live without persecution, and the red striped sections where they are threatened by high levels of lethal control. In Queensland, sheep numbers have decreased by 70% since the early 1990s, and by 40% across the rest of the country. The figures are at a 100-year low. The decline is due to more than just predators. There are economic and climatic factors at work, too. Droughts and bushfires are increasing in Australia. But for farmers on the front line, the dingo is the main culprit. For a dingo, being born on the wrong side of the fence is a death sentence and a license to ignore its status as a unique Australian species. Where sheep and cattle graze, dingoes are classed as wild dogs, grouped with feral domestic dogs and dingo dog hybrids. And here, all wild dogs are subject to lethal control. This persecution has led to the dingo being listed as vulnerable to extinction. But recently, conservationists and researchers have brought new momentum to the conflict between dingo control and dingo conservation. They say that if scientific facts about the dingo were taken into consideration, management practices could be put in place that would keep livestock safe and save the dingo. But what are these facts? Where did dingoes come from? Are they dangerous feral dogs or native animals? And how do they impact Australia's wild environments?
Some of the latest evidence about their origins suggests that dingoes arrived with hunter-gatherers from Borneo and Sulawesi between 5 and 12,000 years ago. They haven't been in Australia for as long as other endemic species, but they have managed to adapt to Australia's harsh environments and learned to hunt its strange fauna, like the giant flightless emu. Some scientists say the dingo is a species in its own right. Like other truly wild canids, it displays unique behaviors. Dingoes tend to howl rather than bark. And they only breed once a year, in autumn or early winter. A recently published study examined 5,000 genetic samples from wild dogs and found that 99% of the animals were either pure or mostly dingo. And one more scientific fact shines a new light on dingoes. They might even be as essential to restoring the ecosystem as wolves have been to rewilding Yellowstone National Park in the USA. Protecting them could benefit the environment and aid recovery from the devastating fires. Scientists of the University of Sydney found evidence of this by conducting an experiment on the very fence built to keep the dingoes out. Using satellite images taken over 32 years, they monitored the environmental effects of a section of the fence. They found that there was more vegetation on the side where dingoes are protected and plentiful compared to the side where they are not. The reason? Dingoes control kangaroo populations. Kangaroos are grass eaters. By reducing their numbers, the soils will be healthier and more vegetation is able to grow, which in turn provides habitats and protection for small native mammals, many of which are endangered. The dingo also kills introduced species like cats and foxes. These feral creatures are responsible for the deaths of millions of Australian animals every year. It's a critical interaction to consider because Australia doesn't just hold the world record for the longest fence, but also for the highest extinction rate among mammals over the last 200 years. So the dingo is a unique Australian animal a wild canid and an apex predator essential for the health of Australia's ecosystem. But will this knowledge help to save it? For now, most farmers continue to loathe the animals because dingoes do kill livestock. But killing dingoes may be making the situation worse. It changes pack behavior. When older dogs are killed, the pack structure collapses. Young dogs that have no adults to teach them how to hunt properly will attack and kill indiscriminately. Is there any hope that the fence which divides both dingoes and Australian opinion will ever come down? Attitudes are changing. Farmers are finding new ways to overcome the problem. Like keeping donkeys with their sheep and cattle. The donkeys become protectors. When dingoes threaten the herd, they scare them off with their braying and aggressive behavior. And some cattle farmers have found that if they don't kill dingoes, the kangaroos are kept under control and their herds have more grass to eat. Conflict between humans and wildlife is a universal story. It's complex with lives and livelihoods at stake. Can dingoes and humans coexist in Australia? The fence once built to protect farmers' herds may offer the best evidence yet that the dingo deserves a second chance. Wildlife protection and conservation is the topic we hold dearest here at Taramata, which is why our mind was blown when we found out about the courageous women on the front line against poaching in breaking their silence. This film by the award-winning filmmaker Kerry David is one amongst thousands of carefully curated short and long-form videos, documentaries, tutorials, how-tos, and more on Wondrium. Wondrium is a museum for your mind, academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched, and relentlessly entertaining. In a nutshell, Wondrium is the place for minds that wonder. If you've ever wondered about anything, Wondrium will be your favorite new place. Visit wondrium.com slash terramata now, or find the link in the description below and start your free trial today. Australia's dingo situation is only one of many of our conservation stories. Check out this playlist for more videos, and please do consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you soon.